So uh, we want to welcome you to Brentwood uh, Online Math Sunday School. And uh, we appreciate you guys attending. For those of you, there are 30 call-in uh, listeners right now, uh, 17 on the app. Uh, so we appreciate the call-ins and the apps in all the different ways. Uh, I've been told that some of you that are calling in are on speakerphone with your spouses and family. So we appreciate those that are listening around the fire of Brentwood of Sunday School. Uh, and we appreciate you. We are honored and privileged and humbled by um, the invitation for us to be able to teach and share God's work with you uh, through Sunday school. So again, we, we are really appreciative of the fact that you guys uh, are not only attending Brentwood Mass Sunday School, but got up at Bedside Baptist and enrolled out to Sunday school uh, as well. So uh, with that being said, as we do always, we always start with prayer. Um, Brother Walker, you want to you wanna pray? Yes. All right. Let, let us bow. Gracious Father, we love you. We love you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, for what he did for us. He gave us the victory, Father. He gave us conquered death and sin and gave us eternal life. Father, Father, we love you. It's up to us to, to focus on you, live our lives just like you, Father. Study your word, become stronger. And that's what we ask this morning, that you give us the wisdom and knowledge of this lesson, that we may be better Christians. These blessings we ask in our son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Walker. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. So uh, just a couple of housekeeping uh, items for those of you that are on the uh, app. If you have questions or comments, um, uh, we'd love to hear them, love for you to uh, participate. Um, you can do that by either typing the question in the, in the chat uh, at the bottom of your screen. There's a, a button for uh, chat. Um, and then there's also a button for Q&A uh, as well. And that question will stay up until we uh, answer it. And then finally, you can actually raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand feature as well. So while we're going through the lesson, if you have a question and or a comment, uh, or in addition to the lesson, then uh, feel free to do those. Again, we want you to uh, participate as much as possible uh, in this so we can feel like it's a normal face-to-face -face Sunday school. And so uh, we have, just like in the last four weeks, split up the lesson and each of us will take a point. Uh, so just one of those are the three ways chat, raise your hand or put it in the Q&A uh, button at, at the uh, bottom. For those of you on the phone, feel free to email myself, Kevin at KevinRiles.com, Kevin at KevinRiles.com. My last name is spelled R-I-L-E-S or Deacon Smith and or Deacon Smith with any questions. And she can share those with us. I'm just putting her on the spot. So she probably over there like, Kevin, you didn't tell me this, but we love you. Uh, so uh, with that being said, um, the lesson this week is on page 55. Page 55. For those of you that have the book, page 55. And, and I'm, I'm going to let Deacon Smith come in here uh, real quick because I'm, I'm putting her on the spot. So hold on. Hold on, Deacon Smith. All right, Deacon Smith. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can. Got a little echo, but I, uh, we can hear you. Wonderful. Uh, my system was acting up. Okay. That was why I was concerned. But my email is working. Okay. And so send all the questions you want. And it's okay. You put me on the spot, Kevin. Uh, all right. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, when you get a question, just forward it to my email, uh, and I can check it as well. Okay. Yeah. We'll do it. All right. God bless you all this morning. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Good awesome. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Digger Smith got the palladium um, a microphone going with the, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh the lesson again is on page 55 of the U book um, and it's unit two, lesson two, unit two, lesson two. Uh, the um, title of the lesson is why the resurrection matters, why the resurrection matters. The background passage is 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 58. Again, that's 1 Corinthians 15. For those of you that don't have the book, 
the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 58. The lesson passage is 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 28, and 54 through 58. The lesson passage, this lesson comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 28, uh, 54 through 58. The question of the lesson is, why does the resurrection matter to me? Why does the resurrection matter to me? And um, the point of the lesson is the resurrection of Christ changes everything. The resurrection of Christ changes everything. And because I forgot to do it last week, um, I want to make sure I call out the memory verse. And the memory verse on the bottom right-hand corner, page 55, is 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. Uh, which is, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So last week, my co-teachers and I made the case. Uh, we, we took this uh, from a standpoint as if, we, as if we were presenting to Brentwood and the jury to make the case that the resurrection actually occurred. And if I do say so myself, I think we did a really good job of making that case. And we Amen. rested our case. <laughs> we rested our case. Uh, and so this week, I would call this the appeal, right? <laughs> the appeal. We proved our point. So this week, I'm calling the subject of the lesson is why the resurrection matters to me. Uh, and so I'm calling this, I'm renaming it the appeal. So we proved that. Jesus was resurrected. On the third day, he rose. We proved it. We had witnesses the whole nine. And so, okay, you proved it, but why does it matter? So why does it matter? So it makes sense, right? So last week, if you go back, those of you that have the book in Unit uh, 2, Lesson 1, uh, it was the proof that Jesus died for our sins, that he was resurrected. This week is, okay, I believe you. So why? That's what you know a lot of uh, millennials will do. Okay, I understand, but why? Right, or those three years. Why, 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 why? Right? And so with this being the case, um, the question today is why does the resurrection matter to me? Now, again, to set the scene, I like always like to do that so we have context. This is Paul's letter to the Corinthians that he wrote. Uh, and this I would call Corinthians a letter of instruction and correction. Uh, if you read throughout chapters uh, one up until now, he is basically making the case for why uh, Jesus died for our sins. He's giving them instructions about immorality in the church. Uh, just before this, he is talking about uh, talking in tongues and who should be able to do that and should there, be a, there should be a translator there. So he is giving them instruction on how uh, to do this. And then just right before this, he's basically, as we talked about last week, Proving, yes, for those of you that don't believe, Jesus really did die for our sins. I got proof there was witnesses the whole nine. And so now he gets into this uh, chapter or portion of the a verse that he's saying, well, why does that really matter? And so um, the way we have split this up today, I'm going to take point number one. And point number one is Christ's resurrection makes our own resurrection possible. Christ's resurrection makes our own resurrection possible. And for those of you that have the book, that's on page uh, 56. That's on page 56. And as we get into the first point, again, if you have questions, feel free to either chat, hit the Q&A, or uh, raise your hand or send an email if you're on the phone. You have access to your email uh, to Deacon Smith or myself. And so this first point of Christ's resurrection makes our own resurrection possible. I'm going to read... Uh, this first portion of our scripture here, starting in verse 20, it says, But as it is, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as Adam, just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ, all will be made alive. So the way I thought about this particular uh, first point, again, that first point being on page 56, Christ's resurrection makes our own resurrection possible. Uh, I thought about this, this concept of being first, the importance of being first. 
and so I always like to extrapolate scripture into our um, regular lives so that it makes a little bit more sense to me, at least in me, when I'm studying the Bible, I try to compare these things uh, to things that I know so they can really uh, come home to me. And so I thought about this concept of being first because in the scripture in 20, it says uh, he was the first fruits uh, of those who have fallen asleep. And if you look at the first fruits, it goes back to this concept in the Old Testament of giving your first fruits, the first part of your crops, uh, storing those up uh, and giving those uh, to, to God. And so literally, as a man, Jesus was the first fruit of what was to come. And so this whole concept of being first, uh, um, those that have paved the way for us. You know, I think about a lot of our senior saints, and, and I'm sure uh, Cheryl and, and Brother Walker uh, and many of you that are on this particular call um, can remember times where things for us as African Americans were not like this in, in, in that, you know, separate, uh, places to use the restroom, separate water fountains, uh, uh, segregated schools. But you always had that person that first, right? That first, the first that, that took it on, the, literally took it on the chin. And I think about, I uh, just finished reading uh, Manny Marble's uh, autobiography of Malcolm X. And I've been reading um, uh, Bear the Cross about uh, uh, Martin Luther King and all of these first. And I was thinking about Rosa Parks with the craziness that's going on. Uh, one of the White House folks said uh, yesterday that, all these folks that want to get back to uh, uh, to work are like the Rosa Parks, of, and, I, and which made me mad, but it made me think about Rosa Parks and being the first, uh, and, and how the person that goes first typically takes it on the chin and has it harder than everyone else. And so in this scripture, we have Jesus being the first to be resurrected, and and, and being first is, is difficult. Even in 2020, we have people that are still witnessing first, the first uh, black president a couple years ago. We have the first black mayors in Selma, Montgomery, uh, and Birmingham. And so those folks typically have it a little harder than the first. No one has had as harder as Jesus. I'm not trying to compare that. But um, my point is that being the first fruit in this particular situation is so difficult. Uh, and so here we have Jesus. Paul has made the point that Jesus was resurrected. And then he says, well, why was he resurrected? And he was resurrected so that we may have life. He was the first, right? He was the first. And so if you go back and read Isaiah 53, uh, Hosea, uh, and some other scriptures, all of this is referenced back to Old Testament prophecy uh, of, about what would happen when this God child uh, comes into our life. And so first point of the first point, in my opinion, is this whole concept of first fruit. And then secondly, what I would tell you is that uh, for since the death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. The wonderful thing about God and the way God set up the universe is there's such a level of symmetry, right? Symmetry, you know, first and last, alpha and omega, things that just kind of go in a circle. Uh, and so uh, in this particular uh, situation, we have, uh, someone being, and, and there's something I got yesterday that I want to read uh, to everyone, this whole concept of, of symmetry. Um, I received, my wife sent me a text, and I'm going to read a little bit of it. Uh, and some of you may have seen this out on social media or not, but I, I went back and looked at each of these points, and I just thought about this level of symmetry. As we think about quarantine right now, the Latin root for the word quarantine is actually 40. That's what the Latin root word quarantine. So what does the Bible say about 40? The flood lasted for 40 days. 40 years, Moses was fled, uh, fled Egypt. 40 days, Moses stayed on the Mount Sinai to receive the commandments. Exodus lasted 40 years. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Lent is 40 days. 40 days uh, for a woman to rest after giving birth according to the Bible. A group of theologians thinks that the number 40 represents change. It is the time for preparing a person or people to make a fundamental change, something that will happen uh, after these 40 days. Just believe and pray and remember whenever the number 40 appears in the Bible, there is change. Man, the symmetry of things, the symmetry that God puts in this uh, universe. And so here we have Adam died, right? 
We were all born of sin. So that's what that represents in this particular scripture. And then Jesus died, but was resurrected. And so Adam, man, Jesus, man, and God, and Jesus led the way, the first fruits for us to be able to be resurrected. And so we've talked through revelations and all the things that happens in heaven, but in order for us to be Christians, Jesus must have had to die and to be resurrected because he went first. We're coming after him. We're coming after him. And so this is a fundamental part of our faith. We're, we always tell our young adults that without Jesus, we're Jewish. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's true, right? Without Jesus, we Jewish. That's the whole difference, New Testament, Old Testament. So there, there must have been a resurrection. There must be a, a resurrection in order for us to be able to live and join him uh, in the hereafter. So with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to point number two and uh, Sister Ford. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. I like that symmetry change. <laughs> so our point and number two is Christ's resurrection means he reigns as Lord over all. And it's in uh, chapter 15, verses 23 through 28. I'll go ahead and read the uh, scripture verse. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruit afterward, Christ the first fruits, afterward at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father, when he abolishes all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be abolished is death, for God has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says everything, it put under him, it is obvious that the, he who puts everything under, under him is the exception. When everything is subject to Christ, then the son himself will also be subject to the one who subjected everything to him so that God may be all in all. Um, one of the uh, things that, that's very important here is the reason that Paul is writing this letter is because there were false teachers that were attempting to mess up everything that uh, uh, Paul had presented to the Corinthians about Christ. They were coming in with, with ideas that were just not appropriate. We did that last week that uh, the main point of, of our faith is that Jesus uh, died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. And each one of those things have, a, uh, have had some kind of attachment where people are trying to destroy each one of those ideas. Uh, that he died at that particular time, at a particular time uh, that he uh, was buried, they tried to destroy that, and that he resurrected. And so it becomes very important that we focus on the resurrection. And with, uh, within the verses between last week and this week, verse 17, 15, 17 says that, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. And so the resurrection is that most important thing. In addition, um, the verse in verse 1433 that I read last week, it still holds right now, for it says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And so God is, is not the author of confusion. It's, it's man or, or Satan, actually himself, the devil, who is trying to keep us so confused that we can't stay focused on God. In the beginning of the scripture passage that I have, it says, but each in his own order. That order is very significant. And one of the examples of order is uh, the creation itself. Just think as, as God created everything on the sixth day, he created everything else. And then he waited until everything was created and then created man. There was an order to the way he does it. Now we know that God could do anything that he wanted to do, but he created an order so that we can um, see that, that order. And so in Genesis 1, 27, it says, so God created man in his own image and the image of God created he, um, he them, male and female, created he them. 
So God's plan started in the creation. And Jesus was part of that plan. And we see different uh, instances where Jesus actually acknowledges that he's following through on God's plan. Um, when he says um, in the uh, model prayer, he said, God's kingdom come, thy will be done. He's following through on what God has actually put in place. And even as he's going to the cross and he's you know, getting ready for what's about to happen, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. So there's still that, that idea of a plan that is, that is being put in place. And so um, as we continue with this order, Christ is the first fruit. The resurrection of Christ has already happened. Then afterward, at his coming, there's a timing. God has a timing in everything that he does. He says at his coming, the second point is those who belong to Christ. And as I read that, those who belong to Christ, Christ has already taken us in, but then we have to accept that belonging. And uh, I remember recently the uh, sermon that Pastor did on um, uh, for those who love the Lord. So Christ has set it up. God has set us up. But then our part is for those who love the Lord. Those promises are for those who love the Lord. Um, then comes the end. Step number three, then comes the end. And so in that end, the end will be when Christ abolishes all rule, all authority. He abolishes the last enemy, which is death. And then death is placed under his enemies or placed under his feet. And I think about that, that thing about uh, being placed under his feet. And so, you know, if you're, you're, if you're trying to kill a spider and you kill it on the wall, you smash it, and then you look underneath whatever you smash and he's still moving around. You standing up and you get ready to smash that spider, it's guaranteed he's gone. So mm -hmm. that, that enemies, all of those enemies are going to be placed under Jesus' feet so mm -hmm. that they will not exist again. And so um, God abolishes that last enemy, that enemy which is death, that, that which we, we fear most. And then uh, verse 15, 27, God puts everything under his feet. God places everything under Jesus' feet. And so you see the, these concepts of all and everything. He says all over and over again, everything will be subject to God and to Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, he then, when everything is under Jesus' feet, then he hands that over to the kingdom. He hands that kingdom over to God the Father. In this passage, it, it speaks to relationship. And that is one of our primary focuses is that we can see things happening. We can have those things as part of our lives. But until we recognize that there is a relationship, Jesus says that God is our father. And so all of these things that he's doing is because of the relationship that he desires for us to have with him. And that relationship is a loving relationship. Can you imagine that, that God would give his own son in order that we would have that relationship with him? And so in verse 28, when everything is subject to Christ, then the son himself will also be subject to the one who subjects everything to him so that God may be all in all. In that last, uh, very last sentence, so that God may be all in all, that makes me think about the question that uh, Moses asked when God sent him to talk to the elders, to the Jewish elders. He said, who should I say sent me? And he said, I am. Everything goes behind I am. I am that I am, everything. And yeah. so when he says that God is all, he's saying that I am absolutely all. All you need, I've created all of this, follow my plan, stay within my plan, understand my plan and don't, let, don't allow anybody to uh, take your focus off this plan. There's a time, there are times when I look at the, um, the uh, different verses and, and I see something because I struggled with English when I was in high school. And so I, I, I see things. And so 
uh, in the verse where it's the, where the uh, person asked, what is the great commandment? He's asking Jesus and Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your soul. And then the second is this, that you love your neighbor as yourself. When you're thinking about the possibilities, the grammatic possibilities of that, Jesus could have ended with, love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul. That's it, but he didn't. He wanted us to be aware that in addition to loving God, we also need to love our neighbors. He could have stopped there with that period as well, but instead he insisted that we also love ourselves. And so when we're looking at this last part of this, so that God may be all in all, there's a sentence, there's an ending for that, so that God may be all. There could be a period right there, but it didn't stop right there. It says that God may be all in all. God is all in everything that he created, and he is all in us. And that promise of being all in us is what we hang on for now and forever. And that's my part. Yeah. All right. Amen. Sister Ford, uh, we, we appreciate you um, and um, just want to offer this opportunity for people uh, to ask any questions or have any comments. Feel free to um, put it in the chat or raise your hand if you're on the app or send us an email at Kevin at Kevin Riles dot com or uh, reply back to Deacon Smith's uh, email. Um, a couple things that uh, came up while you were doing this before we get to uh, uh, to Brother Walker. Um, uh, Freddie, um, let's see here. Uh, Freddie Richardson said, uh, uh, when we are not in God's order, there is chaos, confusion, and disorder. I don't want to even think about what my life would be if Jesus had not come to earth. So I'd ask the question that's in the book on page, uh, 56, I typed it out in the chat and, and the question was, how would your life be different if Jesus had not come to earth? And so that was Freddie's response, that there would be chaos, confusion, and disorder. Uh, Mary Richards says, uh, then the statement that we are peculiar people becomes untrue. We are different. So our walk becomes different in an answer to that question, if God, uh, if Jesus had not uh, come and died for our sins. And then uh, Deacon Smith asked the question. Uh, she said, what good news that we uh, belong uh, to the Lord? How does this coronavirus fit in God's order? Deacon Smith comes with the, with the theological question, the challenge to teach us. Um, and so my opinion of the coronavirus, that, that's actually come up quite a bit. Where is your God right now with, with, with all that's going on? And you see the, the number of cases and the number of deaths. Um, and so the way I have interpreted the coronavirus through um, my, me being a believer, uh, is that if you look throughout the history of uh, the Bible and the Old Testament and the New Testament and all of the various calamities that fell upon the people from viruses to the Passover to uh, just all kinds of things, uh, God was still present uh, in, in those things and he's still present with us today. Uh, there are some things that um, I've realized now that I'm older in the faith that are just unexplainable uh, as to, you know, why we are going through uh, these things. I am not a believer that God creates uh, the, the coronavirus uh, to, to kill us off and all this craziness that I've seen uh, out there uh, as well. But I do believe that he is here with us uh, and that we have to look at this as an opportunity to, to focus, refocus on him. This pause, this 40 days, this quarantine is an opportunity for us to go out uh, and look at uh, and, and really concentrate on our faith and concentrate on God and concentrate on some things that I honestly think that God wants us to, to concentrate on uh, other in, in addition to him, which is our family, what's important in life. I know I've realized um, I love my wife. I like my wife. I love my daughter. I like my daughter. Um, you know, we've been cooking and eating together, playing games, like time that we just would not have spent uh, together just because life gets so busy. And so, uh, in my opinion, in, in my life, my interpretation of this time, although tragic, uh, has been uh, that God has basically pressed a pause. Literally, scientists have shown here in the last uh, week or so that the earth has literally slowed down on its axis. Like, mm -hmm. because people are not moving around as much because they're in quarantine. Literally, the earth 
has slowed down. Literally, pollution is down by like 50%, right? And so what in our lifetimes, my grandmother is 90 years old. She was born just before the depression. And I was talking to her and nothing in her lifetime has ever happened like this. Uh, and so when, what other time will we have with all the calamities going around and I understand job loss and I understand uh, income loss, but what other time will we, do you have a chance to just sit down? Just sit down, like, and not worry about uh, necessarily anything uh, around you. And so uh, that would be my answer to uh, Deacon Smith's uh, question. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and I don't, let me give it before, uh, Brother Walker, y'all have any comments as to, to those, to that question? No, that, go yeah. ahead, Brother Walker. No, no, I, I, uh, I echo what's been said. I love the, the comments and questions. I, I, I like the focus that, that God seems to, to, to put the family circle more, more closer. You know, I, we also received a call from our oldest grandkids last night, checking <laughs> on well-being. So, uh, there's a message if we open our eyes and hearts and see God throughout this crisis that we're having. And I'm not sure it's a crisis more so than a challenge uh, for believers, this COVID-19. So that, that's my Okay, so I think that this is a time when we begin to demonstrate what we talk, put our, put our uh, walk and our talk that uh, uh, what I was saying initially about God is not the author of confusion, is finding peace even within the confusion that, that's going on. So my big question, I want somebody to ask is, what's up with the toilet paper? What's up with the toilet paper? Why, okay. why did we panic and we're keeping the shelves empty with toilet paper? That, that to me is, is unreasonable. <laughs> um, um, and so I, I, I have my, my peace because I didn't go in there and look for toilet paper. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 that's a whole nother uh, webinar <laughs> <laughs> on people's reaction. So um, as Brother Walker gets prepared to start, um, uh, we had one more comment, and I have to say it because it's my mama. Uh, Ed Parker uh, said that this is one of our wilderness experiences. This is our wilderness experience where we're out in the wilderness trying to uh, come closer to God. And, and for those of you that are familiar with the Bible, uh, of that 40 days and 40 nights just out uh, trying to figure that thing out. And so I agree with you, uh, Mother, that, um, you know, this is a time for reflection um, uh, and just a time for us to get closer to God and then also uh, ask God for his direction in our lives. You know, I, I, my prayer is that people come out of this uh, anew, uh, not only in Christ, but in themselves in that uh, you know, they're concentrating on what's important to them. That's my goal, at least. So with that, Brother Walker, point number three. Point number three, uh, following up on Reverend uh, Riles and Sister Ford, uh, we know Christ was the, the first fruit because he was the first to be resurrected. And we know that uh, Sister Ford talked about the relationship uh, that uh, we should have with Christ because of that. And my topic on focal three is victory. And Christ means that what we do for him matters. I want to stay there just a minute on, on, the, on the topic itself. Victory. We, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about the victory. The victory that, that Christ gave us with his death and resurrection. The hope, the Holy Spirit, the power that he's given us through that. And the, the second part of that is what we can do. Do is an action word. What, what, uh, what we do as Christians and, and, and for him and edifying the kingdom uh, really matters. Then it, it comes into to, to play that uh, our spiritual gifts, uh, how we share the gospel, how we witness. Christ wants us to, we're witnesses to, to what happened and what that really means. And who, who would be the target of whom we're talking to? Well, Christ wants all of us, as we've stated, to be saved. As Reverend Rao said, Adam died, but the envision was for God for all of us to live together. So that being said, there's a target audience that I, I thought last night, if we're, we're in Sunday school, we look out and we say everyone is, is believers. So the target message that we're all on the same page. 
but this, this, this technology that we have this morning, and, and we don't know who's listening that may not be a believer. And, and the message this morning, before I get into the, the scripture that Paul talked about, is that if you, if you watch sports, and you all, at some point in every competition where it's described as a game changer that sealed the victory. And for those who are listening this morning who are not believers, the biggest game changer in your life if you accept Christ's salvation, the free gift. Because without that, what I'm going to read, what Paul was stating, and what we've said thus far, doesn't resonate with you. The death and resurrection and what that means to you, the, the spirit that gets inside of you, that dwells in you. Last week, we talked about the, the false false prophets. And, and there were several examples of, of, of false prophecy. And I was hesitant to bring this one up because it's not so much when you listen at others about the false prophecy, or false prophets and, and, and the, the false teachings per se. It's this term, prognosticate, procrastinate. I always mess that word up, sorry. <laughs> procrastinate. And you know, what that means is, is that's, that's a self-false teaching that we can do. In other words, I'm, I'm talking unbelievers now, those who have not accepted Christ, if you're listening this morning, don't put it off. I mean, it's time to make a move. It's time to not just stand and, and, and have that that myth or that concept, well, Christianity allows me, like the, the thief on the cross, at the last minute I can, can ask for, for forgiveness and, and be in paradise. That's a big gamble in life. And you don't want to do that because later on in, in, in our lesson, it talks about Jesus returns. And, and we don't know when that's going to happen. He's like a thief in the night. That being said, let me read the, my part of this, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 54 through uh, 58. And again, Paul's talking to the Corinthians, but I tell you, he's also talking to Brentwood Baptist Church. And, and 54, verse 54 starts, when, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with the mortal, morality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, that's the shouting moment, thanks be to God, <laughs> he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you, Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now, I'm going to give some, some points off this, but as I like to say in the class, there's not a lot of spin when you read the scripture. Sometimes the scripture comes straight at, right at you. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, uh, explanation because it, Christ is making it straight forth to you, as plain as it can be. But the quick takeaways I want to give what Paul was talking about, and again, this is he's talking about us as believers. That when he died, when we die, and Reverend Rao said Christ has already been resurrected, then we too will also be resurrected. The whole topic of that, uh, the resurrected body, life after death. Now our death, our resurrection when Christ is gone. And that verse 54, the takeaway is our changed bodies. We will be changed in the twinkle of an eye, faster than a second, uh, is how I describe it. We'll go from a perishable and mortal and corruptible body <clears throat> to an imperishable, Im immortal and incorruptible body, simply meaning that we, we won't decay or be destroyed. You know, and, and, and that, that in itself is a shouting moment. <clears throat> and I thought about a couple of songs real quickly, and I'm going to read in that great getting up morning. And this, the verse is from Thomas Whitfield's song, and I'm going to quickly read, I shall wear a crown. 
When it's all over, I shall wear a crown. I shall see his face. And this is the verse I like. I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over as soon as I get home. Now that, that in itself is what we as believers look for. We're talking about Christ giving us eternal life, the chance that we can go and see his face. And the biggest part of eternal life is, yes, we'll live forever. The spirit will live forever. We'll avoid the second death. The, 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 the physical death is all that we will bear. But the spiritual death, will, we will live forever. There is no spiritual death. So, now, verses, Paul also talked between verses 55 and 57. And the shouting moment again is thanks to God through Jesus Christ for the victory and eternal life. Now, again, the victory we've been talking the last few weeks is that God conquered all. Sister Ford said everything would be under his feet. So he conquered sin and he conquered death. Because Paul also talked about in those verses about the law. And we, we as students of the Bible know that, that the law is something that we couldn't keep. It couldn't be kept in, in, in the Mosaic time. It pointed us to our sin, but it's the only way that we can re receive salvation is through Jesus Christ. And Christ didn't come to do away with the law, but he made the law, fulfilled it, and gave us more abundant life. And, and Paul is reiterating, and again, back to those that might be unbelievers listening this morning. Now is the time to accept salvation. Now is the time to relate to this story about the, the victory that Christ gives us. And, and the greatest value or the greatest thing in eternal life is to live forever, of course. But the whole point is to see Christ's face, the one that loves us. So the whole Bible is a love story uh, that, that Christ talks to us about each and every day. Third point in, in verse 58, I want to make that Paul talked about is the personal, I, I deem it the personal spiritual challenge. In other words, this is all on us. How do we apply the resurrection to our lives? And, and that's what Paul said as Christians, I, I, uh, I'm a lead learner, not necessarily teaching senior adult class. And we always talk about the, we got to stand firm in what we believe, the word of God that we gotta not be easily swayed back and forth. We shouldn't be swayed at all. We should stay steadfast in the word whenever challenged. And this is an old ethic that, that Reverend Riles talked about his grandmother taught me. You got to work hard. You got to get up and go to work hard. Getting up, going to work every day means getting up, studying the word of God, praying to it, worshiping, mm -hmm. asking him to take care of you. And I know that care you is carry, I know. You got it wrapped all around God, let it wrap all around you and y'all walk together each and every day. And the, and the third and last and couple of points I want to make, it, it, it talks about our never forgetting. And the biggest thing about never forgetting is all those things that God has done for us in the past. And, and, and our membership matters. I'm going to close with how Brentwood, how I love, how we wear the t-shirts, how we have the centering moment where our membership matters were on the video and selected members get up and talk about what Christ means to them. It's a membership. They always said, this is why I like Brentwood, et cetera. But really the whole essence is you're, you're a member of the body of Christ and what Christ has done for us and how we should act as members of the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. The t-shirts look really nice. The, the, the pictures of the t-shirt, but if our heart, are not in sync with Christ and what he has done for us through his death and resurrection, then we still miss it. Well, that's why we pray. So now again, this morning, we're talking to unbelievers to, to get your act together. Now is the time. And I challenge you, if you any are out there listening, it's a good life. It's the biggest game changer that you could ever do in your life. And lastly, because the only thing that matters is what we do for Christ, and it's the only thing that will last. And that's it. I'm summing it up. Uh, summing it up pretty much, Reverend Riles. 
Well, Brother Walker, uh, I'm supposed to be Reverend Kev, but you, you didn't you didn't give us a sermon right there with the three points and the close. Uh, close it out. Uh, that was awesome. That was really, really, uh, really, really good. I, I, I so enjoy your uh, take on uh, these uh, these these points. I got, I got to get my three points and close uh, down uh, uh, like you, Reverend uh, uh, Brother Walker. Um, but uh, I guess what I would say is to close this out, and again, if you have questions or comments, feel free. We have, we're at around 9.20 uh, for those of you that are listening uh, online. So we have about 10 minutes before prayer time uh, at the church. Um, just from a close standpoint, and Brother Walker alluded to this, um, you know, the, 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 the good news, the shouting moment is that the game is rigged. The game is rigged in our favor. Uh, we have been uh, one. We haven't played it yet. We play. We've been playing Uno a lot. But uh, one of the games that we uh, we're going to play probably this week is uh, my wife is trying to get us to play some board games. Is the game of life? Uh, there's a there's a board game called the game of uh, life. And so I thought about that uh, as Brother Walker was um, ending our lesson as far as the points. And uh, you know, how would you act if you know you were going to win? Yeah. How would you act if you know you were gonna gonna win? Yeah. Uh, a good Christian way. Uh, okay. And so uh, I thought about that, and and you know you would just be uber confident because I know I'm gonna win, right? Mm -hmm. So I might I'm gonna play the game, but I, I know that I'm gonna win. And so as you think about those sports metaphors, if if you know you're gonna win, then the way you play is differently than if there's a question, right? The way you play life differently when you are a believer in Christ is just different because yeah. the game is rigged in our favor. Yeah. If you um, believe in Christ uh, and, and the resurrection, uh, and so the game is rigged. And so you, you'll be happy. I'm playing the game in, in happiness because, hey, it's going to win. Even when the game gets hard, I have to remind myself, oh, the game is rigged. I'm, I'm, I have victory. I have victory. I'm going to win. It's just no other you know, uh, case uh, about it that I'm 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 going uh, to to win. And so, as I was thinking about that, uh, my mom is on here. So my mom used to be the YPD director. For those of you that grow up uh, AME or AME Church, that's the Young People's Department in the AME Church. So she was the YPD director at Southwest AME Church in Houston, Texas, church I grew up in. And uh, I was at church all the time, like all like every day. Uh, because my mom was, uh, it still is active in the AME church. And so uh, I was in a youth choir, I was the usher. I mean, everything, we, not a big church. And so it made me thinking, I'm not, uh, the, the, uh, the song, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. Go boo, go boo. I told Satan to get me behind, victory today is mine. That's my yeah. only singing, that's my only singing. But that's what we're singing. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Uh, I know some of y'all are much better singers. I know uh, Ms. Morgan, who's a beautiful singer, she's out there. So uh, hopefully nobody hung up after that. But, uh, but that's the good news today is that victory uh, is mine. And that's what, uh, this, in this appeal, for those of you that now believe that Christ was resurrected, this week is about the appeal. Okay, if he was resurrected, I believe you. Uh, then why was he? Why is that important to me? And I feel like we have um, presented a case to you uh, that that is important to you because he's the first fruits. He's gone before it, and he's guaranteeing victory over death, and he's guaranteeing victory, uh, uh, guaranteeing victory over death. So, in the tradition of the African American church, as I always say, as we come to a close, um, I want you to remember on page fifty nine. Um, there's, uh, I always like to reference the live it. How do we live this lesson? How do we live this lesson? And the way we live this lesson is uh, those three points at the bottom on page 59, which is confess our sin so we can stay in step with God. Uh, we must demonstrate our faith through obedience to God's plan. And then finally, most importantly, and especially now in, in this quarantine days, we should look for opportunities to share with others how Jesus has changed uh, our life. There are people out there that struggle with faith every day, regardless of quarantine. So, in, including the salted. Uh, so, um, in this time, though, I am a thousand percent sure because I've talked to friends that are struggling with faith now. Where is God in this? Uh, my finances are low. Where is God in this? 
um, because I'm, I'm possibly getting furloughed or laid off. Where is God in this? Because I have a family member or friend uh, that is sick. So there's no time like now to be uh, evangelist uh, Christ and, and help people to understand and pray with them and be with them. And don't be afraid. Uh, I was on a panel the other day on behalf of the Fort Bend Chamber of, of Commerce um, and where we talked about self-care during quarantine and there was a mental health professional on there and she mentioned something that I think is so very important. Don't be afraid to call somebody and say, hey, how are you doing? Like, literally, how are you? No, no, not the whole I'm fine, everything's good. But no, seriously, how are you doing? Uh, and you'd be surprised how many people just need somebody to talk to. Uh, and to me, that whole WWJD, what would Jesus do? To me, Jesus would be, how are you doing? You doing all right? And reminding us of his uh, grace uh, and mercy. Uh, so uh, I just want to encourage you out there as you live this um, this lesson is to go check on your, your folks, those that you have. So um, Cheryl, I had to uh, mute you for a second. So with that being said, um, if there are any questions, I'm going to look over here in my chat. I see you, uh, Deacon Smith. I'll call you on, on your second. Appreciate your um, Deacon Wilson, Rodney Wilson. T today's teaching is mo most helpful and very appreciated. Uh, let me see, T.J. Robertson, don't lose momentum by worrying about things you've uh, already placed in God's hands. Amen to that. All right. And then let me call on Deacon Smith here. All right, Deacon Smith. Can you hear me? I can. Are you on your phone and your uh, app? was because of my phone was acting up. Okay. We're getting the echo. That's why I was asking. Oh, okay. You can mute. But you can hear me. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to say great job again. You guys did wonderfully as usual. Uh, so to God be the glory. I agree so much with your reach out because all of us need to know that somebody cares for them. And the, this was not a surprise to our gracious Lord. We'll be able to look in the rearview mirror and see how it all did really work for the good. I just want to remind everybody, don't forget, prayer is at 930. Worship is at 10 o'clock. And of course, don't forget to mail in your tithes and offering or however you do it. I'm afraid I'm guilty of mailing it in. I know Reverend Kevin wouldn't even think of that. <laughs> push pay, push pay. You know, I'm halfway a millennial. Push pay. <laughs> to God be the glory. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Deacon Smith. So uh, as we close out, um, just want to, uh, again, remind you uh, that when you do are doing your tithes and offerings, uh, you know, please... Uh, um, I would ask that you bless the Sunday school in that and mark some of that uh, for your Sunday school. I do that on push pay. I put a little note in there uh, to put a portion towards Sunday school as well uh, and all the programming that they pr uh, provide. So I ask uh, for that as well. Uh, we really do want your feedback on, to, on this, uh, this mass Sunday school online, constructive feedback, you know, you know, anything that you would suggest that we uh, do. Uh, this is something that we hope that will uh, continue past this quarantine time in one way, shape, or form. So any feedback you have would be uh, would be great. And then uh, beginning next week, beginning next week, um, when Deacon Smith sends out the instructions uh, to log on, the meeting ID is going to change, but it's going to change and be the same for the rest of the time that we are doing this. And so you will no longer after, not this week, but starting next week, the meeting ID will remain the same and the password will remain the same uh, throughout the time that we are on there. We set that up this week. So after this week, when she sends out the instructions, you won't need new instructions. The link will be the same, the meeting ID will be the same, and the password uh, will be the same. Uh, so uh, you know, for those of you that are calling in, uh, once she sends it out, and we just ask that you share that with people. Uh, I know I sh I've shared it quite a bit with people that don't go to Brentwood and they've been logging on uh, as well. And so uh, you'll be able to not only share it, but 
not have to worry about it changing from, from week to week. And then Deacon Smith has put out her email address out there for those for that feedback. And that email address is G L P Smith. God, let's see, I can't think of an L word. God Larry Paul Smith. God Larry Paul Smith at flash.net. G L P Smith at flash.net. So feel free to email her with any questions uh, and um, you know. Uh, any comments or any constructive things that can make this experience uh, better for you. With that being said, uh, as you hurry to your virtual pews for prayer meeting, uh, uh, we're going to end as we always do in prayer. So if you'll bow your heads, any, I'm sorry, any, uh, any uh, closing comments from our teachers? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to come together. We thank you for this uh, day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Uh, God, we thank you for these teachers, these co-teachers who have put a lot of work into uh, presenting your word and talking about your word. And my, as my favorite scripture says, iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And we appreciate the iron sharpening and the lessons and the thought uh, around your word and your resurrection, God. We know that you were the first fruit. You died for our sins so that we may live better lives and live lives in heaven. God, we just ask that something that was said today, something that was thought about today, uh, something that we talked about blesses the spirits of those that uh, logged on and those that may vi view the video uh, later, God. God, we thank you for uh, our pastor, Dr. Joe Henry Ratliff. Uh, we thank you for this church. We thank you for this Brentwood family. We thank you for this Sunday school. We just ask as we go out throughout this week that something that we touch prospers. In Son Jesus' name we pray. And they all said, Amen. 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 Thank you guys. As always, a uh, prayer meeting has started online. Uh, so don't forget prayer meeting and then 10 o'clock. Um, you know, your virtual pews, don't, 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 uh, you know, everybody got a seat. You don't have to, you know, tell people yeah. about your virtual pews. Everybody got a seat. <laughs> I'm just joking. Y'all have a good, good week. Thank y'all for logging on as always. Yeah.